Do you want to go to the mall? Hello everyone and welcome to Retail Archaeology. Today we'll be taking a look at Chandler Fashion Center Mall in Chandler, Arizona. This mall opened in 2001 and was originally owned by Westcore, but shortly after opening it became a Mace Rich property. As you can see here, the original dedication plaque is still here. Now this mall is not a dead mall at all, it's actually very busy and that's one of the reasons why we're covering it on the channel and also because I've gotten several requests to take a look at this mall. As you'll see throughout the video, there's very little vacancies here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the map and I love these interactive maps, this is really cool. This mall is two floors and it has kind of an interesting design similar to an A where it starts at the food court and then branches out to the multiple anchors. There is a Dillard's here, a Nordstrom, a Macy's, a Harkins Theater, and a Barnes & Noble bookstore. There was also a Sears, but that closed in January of 2019. The Macy's was originally a Robinson's May store, but it converted to a Macy's in 2006. These interactive maps are really fun to play with. You can spin them around, you can zoom in, and you can even click on a store to get more information, and then even get directions to that store. I do miss the old paper maps at malls, but I have to admit this is a pretty awesome replacement for those. What we're looking at here is the empty Sears building, the one vacant anchor that this mall has, but it looks like they've already got something planned to go in based upon the walls they've put up there. I think that's one of the many things this mall is doing right, which is making sure that vacant storefronts don't stay vacant for very long. This corridor is another example of that. I'm sure you notice all the Crayola artwork stuff on the wall. Well, what they've done here is taken a bunch of empty vacant spaces and they found a new tenant, which is Crayola. This summer, they plan to open a 20,000 square foot Crayola experience. and This will be the fifth Crayola experience location in the United States. I think adding experiences like this one and things to do with the mall are what are going to help keep malls alive. I think this is just a great addition here. Arizona Mills Mall is another very busy mall in the Phoenix area that we've covered on the channel before and they have similar experiences like their Legoland Discovery Center and Sea Life Aquarium and adding those experiences in seems to have really helped keep the mall alive and relevant. A lot of people believe that all malls are dying and that's why I like covering busy malls like this on the channel from time to time because I think it's important to debunk that theory. Yes, malls are in trouble in the United States, but they're not all dying, and some are doing things right, and I do enjoy spotlighting that on the channel. This footage was filmed on a early Sunday afternoon, and we noticed as time went on throughout the afternoon, the mall just got busier and busier and busier. This mall is also very easy on the eyes. I believe this is all the original decor and stuff, too. I don't think there's been a major renovation inside. There are some stores closing here though, for example the Payless Shoe Source, they recently announced that they'll be closing all of their stores in the United States. Based upon what I saw here though, I don't expect this storefront to stay empty for very long. This mall also has lots and lots of beautiful skylights, which I love. And also working escalators. Maintenance issues like broken down escalators and lots of empty storefronts I think help add to the snowball effect that kills them all and it seems like they've done a really good job avoiding that here. While we walk down this corridor I just want to give a quick shout out to a viewer. Uh, Mark and I ran into a guy named Marty who recognized us while we were poking around the mall and we had a really great conversation with him. So thank you Marty for chatting with us a little bit about malls, it was really fun. You can see as we walk down this corridor, there's skylights that go all along the sides and it makes it just really bright and inviting. See, this is what a mall should look like on a Sunday afternoon. Busy, lots of people shopping, lots of people carrying bags. Seeing stuff like this is really nice because we do explore a lot of dead and abandoned stuff on the channel, so it's a nice breath of fresh air. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this mall opened in 2001, and stepping into it really does feel like stepping 18 years into the past, and, and that's a good thing. Thinking about 2001 being 18 years ago is really making me feel old. Something else unique about this mall are the beautiful Arizona landscape murals that are at the end of each of the corridors, and they're actually photographs from Arizona Highways magazine. And there's also a Arizona Highways magazine display that's been here since the mall opened. You can see there's old photographs there. And then there's a timeline that runs all the way along the display that shows some of the history of Arizona. Here's a closer look at that timeline. 
I hope this is something they never get rid of when this mall does eventually get a remodel because that always does happen eventually to malls. You can see over to the right there, there's a Things Remembered store, and I actually just read that they found a buyer after filing for bankruptcy, so it sounds like some of their stores may be saved. And right next to it is a Claire's, another troubled retailer that we've covered on the channel. There's the Macy's down there at the end, and then just another really beautiful Arizona landscape mural. Even the Macy's seemed pretty busy here. It doesn't seem like very many of these indoor malls are being built anymore. It seems like the trend is now to build outdoor malls, which I'm not a huge fan of. I've always enjoyed the enclosed mall more. And that's another reason why I like this one so much, is that it's enclosed, it's nice and climate controlled, and there's a really, really good selection of stores here. I'm sure the outdoor malls are much cheaper to operate, and they put a lot more of the operating cost responsibility on the tenants, but it seems to me that in places like Arizona, for example, they're really limiting their customer base in times like the summer when it's 115 degrees here. Going to an outdoor mall when it's in the middle of the summer in Arizona just does not sound like fun to me, and I have to imagine it's similar back east where it gets really cold during the winter. I have to imagine people would much rather shop in an indoor heated mall than run around in the freezing cold from store to store. I also like the indoor malls better because they allow for multiple floors, which allows a lot of shopping square footage but a smaller footprint than the outdoor malls have, and they don't contribute as much to urban sprawl, which is becoming a problem. Let's go take a look at the food court now. And as you can see here, the food court is also very, very busy, and there's hardly any vacancies here. There's also a lot of your mall food court staples here, for example, that Dairy Queen slash Orange Julius store. Can you even really call yourself a mall if you don't have an Orange Julius? And there's, of course, one of my favorite things in the food court, mall pizza. Unfortunately, it's not a Sparrow, though. It's a uh, Via Italian kitchen, but it's almost just as good. We can take a closer look at the pizzas here, and you can actually see the guy back there making the pizzas fresh as well, so that's nice to know that they're not just pulling out frozen pizzas out of the back and throwing them in the oven. Mmm, mall pizza. <laughs> As you can see here, there is a very large skylight in the food court. But as you can see from the shot here, people do in fact still go to the mall. They're not all dying. Now right out front of the food court, there's a little outdoor area called the Chandler Village. And this is a pretty neat area as well. There's more restaurants out there and little shops. And there's also valet parking. And sometimes you can get a look at some pretty fancy cars out here. There's a Starbucks there. There's a Kona Grill, which that actually opens up into the food court as well. Valet parking at the mall always cracked me up, though. I, I never felt the need to use it before, although I, I don't have that nice of a car either. You can see there's a Porsche there. It seems like just a place for people to show off. I have noticed the valet parking gets utilized quite a bit more during Christmas time. There's also an old spaghetti factory out here, and I've never actually eaten here before. I should try that out. But you can see there's also a courtyard area out here with games to play and a picnic area. There used to be some really cool dancing fountains out here that were sponsored by the local power company, but I believe those were removed around 2014 to replace it with this courtyard. They did, however, put a splash pad out here for kids to play in, but it's closed for the winter, which makes sense. Although it was a really gorgeous day the day we were here. We also did notice one vacancy out here. This used to be a Cold Stone Creamery, and it's kind of shocking that one of those couldn't make it in the Phoenix area, but it once again looks like they've already got another tenant moving in. Let's go ahead and head back inside now, and we'll take a look at more of the mall. And something else I think they're doing right at this mall is there's a really good mix of stores. You've got your, you know, normal mall stores like Payless, Foot Locker, things like that. But then they also have some luxury brands in here and a few local mom and pop shops as well. It is a really good mix and I think that keeps a lot of different customers coming into the mall. Another indicator that they're doing something right at this mall is the fact that their sales per square foot are far and above the national average. I bet this place is out of control during the Christmas shopping season. And this mall actually has an Apple store as well, and I'm not a huge Apple fan or a fan of their stores. I think they're just super plain looking. There's not even a logo across the top. That's lame. And there's also an Amazon store here, although it's more of a big kiosk, but it's interesting to see Amazon have a retail footprint as well. 
And here's a look at the Microsoft Store. At least they have a logo up top, and it actually looks busier than the Apple Store, and they even have a little Xbox One demo unit set up right outside the store. Something I think is also important to mention is that the Chandler, Arizona area is a very fast growing area with lots of population growth year over year. So I think as long as they continue to see that growth, this mall will stay very busy in the future. We found this too. This looks like they're putting in another Wetzel's Pretzels in here, a kiosk. It's just not quite done yet. And I always kind of wondered how they got the plumbing and electricity in. So it's interesting to kind of see these guts before the kiosk is completed. It looks like this corridor is going to smell real good in the near future. We were kind of surprised to see this out of order elevator. I, I wonder how long it's been out of order. That doesn't seem to fit with the rest of the condition of this mall. Oh look, a GameStop. It's time for my obligatory I'm working on a GameStop video statement. I, I really am working on a GameStop video. It's just really hard to get usable footage inside their stores with how small they are. I have to say, I can find very little faults with this mall. It is really a great place to shop, but I'd love to hear about your memories of shopping at Chandler Fashion Center down in the comments below. As always, everyone, thanks for watching. Want to see your name here? Head on over to patreon.com slash retailarchaeology to find out how you can help support the channel. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out my look at Chandler Fashion Center. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons, and also make sure to follow at the social media links down there because that's the best way to keep up with what's going on with the channel.